Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we'll be covering how the force velocity relationship can be used to program power training for athletes for optimal power development. First and foremost, we need to establish what we mean when referring to power training. For this video, we will define power training as moving external loads using ballistic exercises. Ballistic exercises are those which involve complete acceleration through the entire movement. This includes exercises like jumping and throwing. Power training does not refer to classic strength exercises, such as the squat or bench press, even if used with lighter loads and lifted with fast velocities. This is because classic barbell and dumbbell exercises involve a deceleration phase and ultimately come to a stop at the end of the range of motion. Therefore, no matter how fast they are moved, they are not ballistic exercises. Now that we have established what we mean by power training, let's explore the force-velocity relationship. The force-velocity relationship describes a simple relationship between force production and movement velocity. Or in simple terms, it shows the relationship between how much weight is lifted versus how fast it can be lifted. Essentially, the heavier the load is, the slower the exercise will be performed, while the lighter the load is, the faster the exercise can be performed. To use a practical example, let's take the squat jump as a power exercise. Let's say we load 60 kilos on the bar for a particular athlete and get them to jump as fast and as high as possible. Since the athlete is jumping with a significant external load, jump height won't be very high. If we then load 45 kilos on the bar, the athlete can now jump higher than before. If we then reduce the load further to 30 kilos, the athlete can jump much higher and move much faster once again. So as the load decreases, the movement speed and jump height increases. So power training can use a range of different loads, although what loads have the most benefit for athletic performance? Generally, lighter loaded power training will have the most direct transfer to athletic performance since it is more specific than heavier loaded power training. This is because athletic movements are generally unloaded, meaning that they are performed with fast velocities. However, we cannot always use light power training in our strength and conditioning programs all year round, as the athletes will eventually adapt to the monotonous stimulus and fail to continue improving. Therefore, it may be a good idea to use variation at some point in our training plan to ensure continual progression. Let's now explore how power training can be programmed at different times of the year using the information that we have previously established. In the early preparation period, the athlete doesn't need to be in peak condition for their sport, therefore more general training methods can be used. For power training, this means that we can use heavier loads since they are less specific to athletic performance. These heavier loads will emphasize force output, which can potentiate the lighter loaded power training that will be used later in the preparation cycle. For example, the squat jump may be implemented in this period with a load of 60 kilos. This may be a fairly heavy load for this particular athlete, meaning that force output will be high, but jump height will be low. Later in the preparation period, the athlete may want to start entering better physical condition so that they are in better shape for their sport. This means that slightly more specific training methods should be used. For power training, this means that we should use moderate loads, as this will allow slightly faster velocities. The moderate loads will have a balance between force and velocity output, making them not the most specific power training method, but also not the most general. For example, the squat jump may be used in this period with a load of 45 kilos. This is lighter than the previous period, meaning that slightly higher jump height will be reached, while force output will be slightly lower. When an athlete needs to be in peak condition for their sport, training methods with the most transfer to performance should be used. For power training, this means using light loads. Light loads will allow the fastest movement velocities meaning that they will have the highest transfer to athletic performance. For example, the squat jump may be used in this period with a load of 30 kilos. This is lighter than the previous two periods, 
allowing the highest jump height and fastest movement velocities. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.